Hey everyone, I wanted to share my Friday love message in a video today. My Friday love messages are getting longer and who wants to read a long message? Sometimes we like reading um, or listening to videos. So I'm actually gonna see if I can put this in both audio and video for you. Anyway, wanted to share this with you. It's gonna be a part one, a part uh, two part series. And it's called Commitment and Self-Love are the Hardest Parts of This Journey. Why Commitment? So the title of today's is Why Commitment is the Hardest Part of the Weight Loss Process and How to Make It Easy. Commitment and Self-Love are the Hardest Parts is what an awesome lady said to me in a Facebook me message exchange last week. We were messaging about the weight loss journey I'd been on and she commented on how hard work had paid off. And then I commented that it didn't feel so hard when I'd learned the tools of commitment and self-love. And then she said it, commitment and self-love are the hardest parts. And it hit me so profoundly. That statement stuck with me. And then I remembered when I didn't have the step-by-step -step tools for commitment and self-love and dang, it was hard. It was hard because I didn't understand what was going on with my brain, my body, or my emotions. And it was hard because everything in human instinct, in my human instinct wiring part of my brain, actually has us do the exact opposite of what works. And I was trying to use only the human survival instinct tools of willpower, shaming, guilting, and white knuckling it. And those tools never work for long-term lasting change and they feel really hard. They never work, ever. Let me know if you can relate. Have you ever felt that way? Have you ever felt like committing to the weight loss process and learning to develop self-love are the hardest parts of this weight loss process journey? And just as a little side note, I hesitate to call it a weight loss process or journey anymore, honestly, because it's really a life change, a creating of your heart's desire process and journey. It's really creating a creating of an understanding, not only of your body and your brain, but your relationship with yourself, your family, and your whole world. It's a process of healing all those things and creating freedom and peace and joy and love in the space where all that human survival instinct used to take up all your brain energy. Anyway, I digress. Let me get back to the topic. Have you ever wondered why commitment and self-love feel like the hardest parts? Read on. Actually, I'm reading my blog here, so I'm kind of reading it to you. So we're going to talk on, let's start to change that today. So let's talk about why commitment feels so hard. How often have you told yourself, if I could just get committed, then I could just lose the weight? How often have you told yourself, I really want to? Wanting's the easy part, but I just can't seem to get committed. If that sounds familiar, there's a reason for this. This is what the human brain is wired to do instinctively. It's wired to want to conserve as many calories as possible. So it's not instinctive. It's not our like first reaction for most people to have all kinds of commitment tools in our toolboxes. What is instinctive is the following, wanting to do it, but not committing, not feeling capable of doing it is instinctive. Giving up is instinctive. Only seeing how many times we've failed in the past is instinctive. And only using that instinctive part of our brain that always defaults to looking at the past evidence, usually negative past evidence, to think about solving a future goal or creating a future goal. Let's dive in here. It's very hard to solve or create a future goal. And I should probably take very hard. It's pretty much impossible to solve or create a future goal using the same old brain software programs from the past, which is what the brain does. It goes to the past because it's like using that first version of the Mac. Do you remember that Mac, that like big old kind of, I don't know, manila colored folder colored, big bulky thing that just had dots and zeros to run the internet. It's like trying to use that to run the internet. It doesn't work. Now, side note, I know maybe techies may have some other info, but in theory, that's you get what I'm going for, right? But this is the biggest problem with not being able to commit. When contemplating committing to a new change, our brains are wired to default to look in our memory bases for evidence of whether we've been successful or not at that particular task, and in this case, long-term weight loss. It could be success in business, success in relationships, anywhere. And when the brain does not find evidence of success with success in weight loss in the past, it will automatically start to run an automatic pilot thought program 
Yes, please think about it like a computer program in the back of your brain. Okay, so think about it. it starts to run an automatic pilot thought program and that background program on autopilot, most of us aren't aware that it sounds something like this. This could be a possibility of failure. There's no evidence of success. Therefore, this could lead to overexpending your brain and body's energy and calories. So it would be wise to conserve calories so you don't overexpend your calories and therefore die. That's what's happening in the background. So this is really the background thought software program that's instinctively running and instinctively runs for most people when they think of committing to learning to lose weight for good. Another reason it feels so hard is because our instinctive survival brain is usually running a program of all or nothing thinking or black and white thinking or either or thinking, meaning it'll go to extremes. This is what survival instinct does. It's wired to see and default to extremes. This will sound like telling you that commitment has to look like going to the gym one to three hours, five days, seven days a week, or not at all. Never eating any sugar or flour ever again, or eating all of it. Never eating any bad things ever again, eating all the bad things, okay? This is what the brain will do. It'll be like, this be, these are the only options. And essentially all of these are your brain saying either or, you're either perfect or you fail. You're perfect or you die. And being perfect is an illusion. It's a lie of our survival brain's instinct. And this pretty much always feels too big to tackle. So why in the world, why would you commit to losing weight long-term or to learning the tools to lose weight long-term if these survival brain instincts are running in the background? This is why it feels so hard. It's counterinstinctive to how our brain, brains are wired when we don't understand this about our brains. It's that it's counterinstinctive. And when we don't understand this, and we don't understand how to talk back to our brains and talk back to that instinct survival system, this is why it feels so hard. But that's actually what's required and what works to enable you to really commit and create long term weight loss and create that goal and it doesn't have to be just weight loss it can be with anything you want to change relationships anything so let's talk about the tool that I'm going to share today how to talk back and redirect the survival instinct programs of your brain so now that you know that these are the background programs that are running that cause you to not commit I invite you to acknowledge these programs and talk back to your brain and we're going to talk kindly. Kindly is important, and I'll discuss why in next week's um, message on self-love. But this is how we're going to start to talk back with these very effective questions. Number one, what am I thinking right now? And you can take note of this, and this will be also in the written um, transcript below. What am I thinking right now? And then be quiet and actually listen. Put on imaginary duct tape. Just ask that question of your brain and be quiet. Number two, what is my brain telling me that's impossible right now? Be quiet and listen. And then ask, what if all of it's a lie? And here's a hint. It usually is a lie. It's just a lie coming from the survival instincts, desire to avoid potential danger and die. Okay, so question number four, what either or black and white or all or nothing thinking or extremes is my brain coming up with now? And then be quiet and listen. Number five, what could I do to commit to getting one step closer to my weight loss heart's desire goal today? What one step can I take right now to move towards my weight loss journey heart's desire now in the next hour, in the next four hours, in the next 24 hours? This set of magic questions will take your brain from being in survival instinct um, repeating mode to connecting to your prefrontal cortex and therefore accessing your ability to solve a problem from your prefrontal cortex, otherwise known as solving it from that part that can see the future. And this is what I meant. So the important part here is stop and listen. 
Stopping and listening after asking these questions are the crucial part of this process. It allows your brain to do its most amazing job, like I just said a couple, just a minute ago. When you ask questions like this and you stop and you listen, it actually shifts you. I'm going to repeat this again. It shifts you so that you can connect to your prefrontal cortex instead of defaulting to that instinctive autopilot part of your brain that are only concerned with survival and not thrival. And the prefrontal cortex is that part of your brain that has amazing problem solving skills. I want you to fall in love with those, that part of your brain, that prefrontal cortex with those amazing problem solving skills, rational thought skills, imagination, and empowerment capabilities. This is why it's so important to ask one question at a time and give yourself quiet think time. Little side note, this can be defined as a type of meditation, asking these questions and just being quiet. And meditation is essentially quieting the mind so it can heal and think and rest and rejuvenate instead of being on a crazy instinct autopilot mode all the time. And it really helps your brain work more effectively. So after you ask these questions and listen, actually schedule some time to ask these questions and I recommend journaling them. You'll be able to be connected to your prefrontal cortex and your brain will have, your brain will come up with some ideas of what you want to commit to how you want to commit to it and how to move you steps forward. What if you really did have some of the answers inside of your brain? What if you really could learn to use your brain in ways that would serve you instead of work against you? And it's important to ask the question about how do I take one step forward so that we can mitigate the potential derailing of the instinct of all or nothing black and white either or thinking. Okay, and this is how you actually commit. You stop, you ask questions kindly, especially questions number five and six, and you listen. Then you take that one step that your brain told you to take. One step, one step at a time. You do that each day, and then you build the mental muscles of learning to commit. And this is how you work with your brain instead of against it. And this is how commitment gets easier. And this is how you commit to your heart's desired weight loss and life journey and process that you most want. And this is how you start to create your heart's desire weight loss goal permanently. This is what makes it, it long-term, forever, and permanent. So join me next week when I discuss why self-love is the other hardest part and how to work with your brain instead of against it so it becomes much easier to I love you. Have a great week. And if you would like more support, you're ready to learn how to really commit and learn to commit to your create to create your long-term weight loss goals and to learn to work with your brain and create those heart's desire goals. Send me a private message and let's set up a time to talk. I'm offering a very special um, bonus for those people who sign up before December 31st. You're going to get my seven week deep dive healing class on top of all of the curriculum that I already teach and coach you on. Plus you're going to get my eight week understanding deep diving into being a woman and where you're at and what your different brain things do in the deep dive healing pieces around creating freedom in all parts of your world as a woman. And I can't wait to share that with you. It's gonna be so much fun. So again, if you'd like more support, send me a little message and let's set up a time to chat. I love you. Bye-bye.